and pray. <laughs> and 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 when 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 you when you pray, it's it's no harm even to uh, write out your prayer and read it. It's no harm if if you're going to get off course. Uh, and you may forget and start rambling, just write it out and read it. And, and, uh, but, but Jesus is against you just getting up uh, saying things that you don't know what they mean. And just because you heard somebody else say it, you're going to repeat it. I remember, I remember, Pastor, I was in Nashville and my seminary days, and we went to visit a church during revival service. And uh, it, we, had, we had deacon's devotion back then, and, and um, the deacon got up to pray. Uh, well, he in devotion, he already up. And, but when he prayed, he says, Oh, God, we come before you tonight knee bowed and body bent and he's standing as straight as I'm standing now <laughs> he, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't need all of that trying to be impressive for people to say how well you pray he just wants you to pray so he says, he says, he says, um, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Shut the door on your husband or wife. They should know that you have a time you need to get along with the Lord. And, 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 and they shouldn't be bothering you during that time. I, and, and shut the door on the children. They, they, um, whatever they need, make sure they have it before you go in to talk to the Lord. Shut the door on the telephone and, and the television, the iPad, the Twitter, and the computer. Shut the door. And shut the door to outside noise and disturbance. Shut the door on the devil, for he's always eavesdropping to see what you're talking about. And especially to the Lord. When, you, when we pray in, in sincerity to the Lord and 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 seeking his guidance and his direction, uh, uh, and and many times the devil will interfere and put doubts and reservations in our minds. He says, he says, he was saying, you don't expect God to do that. A, a God can't do it. There isn't anything too hard. For God to do. God can handle all of our situations. He can take care of all of our problems. So we don't need the devil trying to tell us what God can't do. God can do in and everything that's within his power and that's all power. Shut the door. Jesus want some quiet time with you. He wants some private and quality time with you. Uh, like he had with his father when there are many times he would get away. He shut the door, so to speak, on his disciples and the people. He got away for some quiet time just with him and the father. Uh, he had to get away from anything and everything that would be a distraction during his prayer time. 
you, you, you don't want to be talking to the Lord and the phone rang and you got to put the Lord on hold. You're talking to the Lord and the doorbell rang and you got to put him, I got to go see who it is. You, you, it, if they didn't call before they, you start praying, let them come back. Shut the door. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. The pastor cannot and will not take credit for all the Lord has done, is doing, and going to do for Christ the King. But what his evidence is, the pastor has spent some private and quality time with the Heavenly Father in the secret place. And the Heavenly Father has rewarded him openly. It is, it is that secret place the hymn writer had in mind when he wrote, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush, they're singing, and the melodies that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. He, he walks with me, and he talks with me. He, he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there is like none other has ever known and 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 at this time Enoch steps forward and says yes I know what it's like to walk in that secret place with God it was a daily routine for me and and one day while I was walking with him our conversation got so interesting I I got so close to where God lived and it was too far to go back home. And, and he said, come on home with me. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible certifies Enoch's testimony by saying, and God took him. I, I, I remember, I remember so well uh, growing up as a kid, my aunt would come and visit our house with my mother. And, and every now and then, my mother would decide she was going to walk them piece of way home. <laughs> and, 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 and then they, they, they would, I would look up and mama sometime would be sitting on Aunt Mabel's porch. And, 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 and then, and then Aunt Mabel would get up and walk piece of way back with mama. So I, I can understand how, how Enoch started walking with God. You, when the conversation gets so interesting, it becomes so uh, intense that you forget about the time and space, and, and it's just good to have that walk, that walk with God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego step forward today with their testimony to let us know that they too have spent some time in that secret place. These men said they were kept, taken captive, taken from their homeland by the Babylonians. He said that they, they changed our name and they tried to change our culture and God. Uh, uh, but but, but we remained steadfast and unmovable in our faith 
in the God who uh, uh, shared well our fathers and forefathers and, and how he had brought us thus far. And although we were in a strange land, we didn't forget about our God. And, and they, they left on record that the king Nebuchadnezzar made a golden image which stood about a hundred feet tall and and his command was for all those who resided in the city that they were uh, whether they were citizens or not they they had to be under his control when you when you hear the music when you hear the symphony you you are to fall down and worship this gold image you are you are to pay homage to my god and and and, and the, the day of worship when the time came for uh, the music to play and for all of the people, every nation and language who were in that city, when they heard the music, they were to fall down and worship this gold image. And, 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 and just like many of us, when we go to worship, we're looking around to see who else is doing what. But when you go to worship, your worship ought to be between you and your God. You, you ought to be so focused on what God is saying to you that you shouldn't be concerned about what's happening way over here. But, but, but when, 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 when the music sounded and when everybody bowed, there was somebody watching. And they observed, they observed that everybody didn't bow. And they went, they went to the king and said, uh, King, when the music sounded, everybody bowed but three Jews. They, 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 they didn't bow. And, and, and King, I, I want you to know that these three men hold key positions in your administration. They, they, they don't respect you, nor do they respect your worship. They didn't bow down, O king. The king says, bring them, bring them to me. These three men walked up before the king King asked them, is it true? You did not, you did not serve my God or worship the gold image I've set up. The king says, maybe you'll have a language problem. Maybe it's something that you don't understand and, 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 and maybe because of your misunderstanding, I can help you at this point. And, and I'm willing to answer any of your questions, and, but when the music sound, that means everybody has to bow. And now, if you are ready at this time to fall down and worship the gold image which I made, I'm ready to repeat the ceremony so you can follow through like everybody else. And if you don't worship, you shall be cast immediately into the burning fiery furnace and then he asked the question who 
is the God who will deliver you from my hands. These men responded to the king by saying, O Nebuchadnezzar, we don't mean to be rude or disrespectful regarding this matter. There is no need for you to repeat the ceremony. We understood it clearly the first time. We understood your command for worship. We also uh, understand and accept your punishment for not worshiping your God. But we cannot bow down to God who has eyes and cannot see. We cannot bow down to God who has ears and cannot hear. We cannot bow down to God who has hands and cannot hold our hands. We cannot bow down to God who has feet and cannot walk. We cannot bow down to God who has a mouth and cannot speak. We cannot bow down to God who uh, has no life and who cannot help us. But the God, but the God, but the God we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. He, he's able uh, to deliver us from your hand, O King. And if he choose not to deliver us, let it be known this day to you, O king. We will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image. The king, the king, the king was furious. And he had the men call his strong soldiers who was in his army, told them to heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. Told them, told them to tie up the men and prepare them to throw them in the furnace. And, and while this was going on, I want to inform you that it was, it was a brief conference going on in heaven. God, God, God called Gabriel and said, Gabriel, how long would it take you to get to the furnace? Gabriel says, it would take me about a minute. Michael, how long would it take you to get to the furnace? Michael said about 60 seconds. God asked Jesus, how long will it take you to get to the furnace? Jesus said, I'm already here. I'm, I'm, I'm standing. I'm standing waiting to greet the men, to escort them in. They, they, they are there. They are prepared, they are bringing them now, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm here. And, and when they brought them in, the Bible said the furnace was so hot. Y'all yeah, yeah, sit down, I ain't, I'm not going. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the, the furnace was so hot un, until, until the men who brought them to the furnace, the heat killed these men. But when, 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 uh, uh, when the three Hebrew boys got to the furnace, Jesus was there. And, and he untied them. And while the king was sitting in his chair observing the execution, uh, he happened to look up and saw in that furnace, he asked, didn't we put in three men? <laughs> B 
But there's four. They are walking around in the furnace. I, I, I want you to know when you go to that secret place and when you talk to God, whatever your situation, whatever your problem, whatever happened in life, he will meet you there. He'll take care of your problem. He'll take care of the situation. The king jumped off of his seat, went running to the furnace, calling the men out. They came walking out, dressed up, like they went in. They had no burns. They didn't smell like smoke. The hair was not singed. Everything in place. The king says, I praise your God for your deliverance. For your deliverance. I want you to know that God is still in the delivery business. D -d Daniel, Daniel, Daniel said, I would like for you to add my name to those who have been rewarded openly. Then Daniel, Daniel uh, said, I also know something about that secret place. Daniel, Daniel was well respected by the king. And he was, he had done so much good that the king felt somewhat indebted to Daniel because of him and his God. He was able to reveal some things to him that he would have never known had it not been for Daniel. And, and, but, but when the king had placed Daniel along with two other men as administrator, over his kingdom, these men were jealous of Daniel. More so when they got word that King Darius was going to make Daniel the chief administrator of his kingdom, making him the second man only in command to him. Daniel had been distinguished from among other leaders by his exceptional qualities and his abilities. He was trustworthy. His conduct was blameless and faultless. He also did what was right. The idea of making Daniel uh, second in command found opposition among Daniel's co-workers, they organized and tried to formulate uh, charges against him and his conduct in his governmental affairs. But they were unable. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has to do with the law and his God. So they came together and drew up an irrevocable decree that would conflict with Daniel and his God. But they had to make it so impressive that the king would agree and sign. And when they, 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 they also had to lie and acting like Daniel was part of that decision. The recommended decree read, we all have agreed that the king should issue an order, enforce the decree that only anyone who prays to any God or man during the next 30 days, except for you, O king, shall be thrown into the lion's den. 
once King Darius put the decree in writing, it could not be changed, not even by him. He didn't realize that these men were trying to get to Daniel through him. And when he found this out, it was too late. When Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room and closed the door and the window to Jerusalem remained open. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed in secret, giving God thanks just as he had done always. These same jealous, hateful men, these same conniving, deceitful men, these same prejudiced and hypocritical men followed Daniel home one day and found him in his secret place. These men rushed back to the king and said, Did you not publish a decree? During the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god except you, O king, will be thrown into the lion's den. The king answered, The decree stands according with the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then these same men said to the king, Daniel, one of your, one of the exile, exile Gentile from Judah, uh, pays no attention to you, O king. Ah, uh, the decree you have put in writing, he still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to keep Daniel out of the lion's den, made an effort to find a way to do so. But the trap was firmly set. Both Daniel and the king were caught in it. And the king had no option but to order Daniel to go to the den of the angry, angry hungry lion.